If you're an Android enthusiast, then you've most likely heard of or used Launcher in the past. I've been using it for years now, and to me, it's most known for giving users the pixel-like aesthetic while also adding over a ton of features and deep customization options in a way that I really wish Google would bring to their stock Pixel devices. Recently, the latest Launcher 14 build received a pretty big update from Alpha to Beta, and since there are a ton of you on the channel that love Android customization, I figured this would be a perfect time to give a quick update on what's new, talk about some upcoming features, and discuss some of the best additions that I think Google should shamelessly steal for their own Pixel launcher. Before we get into it, of course, you should consider subscribing to the 9to5Google YouTube channel. Here, we're constantly talking about Google, Android, and all things related. So if you want to stay in the know, definitely subscribe because we have a ton of content in the pipeline that I really, really don't want you to miss out on. First, let's talk about the new additions in this latest launcher update, as there are a ton that really impressed me to say the least. Probably my favorite feature by far has to be Smart Spacer integration, which basically takes Google's at a glance home screen widget and makes it way more powerful. There's a lot it offers, but on a basic level, you can install individual plugins to show new tidbits of data, like previews of Google Keep Notes, Google Finance Stats, Google Wallet Loyalty Cards, or Health Connect data, plus a ton more. But you can also install plugins for third-party apps like Uber, Amazon, and Yahoo Sports. If you choose to install the Smart Spacer add-on, there is a whole plugin story with previews on what each one does, and you have individual settings per plugin to tweak the changes even further. Something cool is that you can have multiple plugins active at once and can easily cycle through them by swiping horizontally on the at-a-glance widget, which is so convenient as I can choose what information is relevant to me as the day goes on without any hassle. Taking things a step further, those changes to at-a-glance can also transfer over to the lock screen and can be tweaked separately from the home screen widget if need be, not to mention, tapping on a customized panel will open the connected widget in their own separate overlay for easy access. To me, this brings at a glance to the next level, and honestly, I'm surprised Google has not implemented their own version like this considering how good of an idea it is. But I'm getting ahead of myself here as Launcher 14 includes many more useful features like a global search that expands on the stock Pixel offering. Not only can you search within your apps, search history, contacts, and more, but Launcher amps it up by including Android system settings, locally stored files, and includes quick access to another new addition called StartPage. StartPage is a private search engine that doesn't track searches or collect data for those that are uneasy using Google Search as their default option, which is great. The Launcher team does say StartPage should provide similar results to a traditional search engine, so it's a good alternative if you feel it's necessary, otherwise you have the ability to turn it off completely. It's also worth mentioning there are a handful of new customization options like the ability to hide the dock, make custom icon shapes, and take advantage of expanded support for more fonts. Animations also received a bit of an overhaul, specifically regarding the transition to the Recents menu. As many of you probably know, Android 10 kind of broke third-party launchers with their addition of their overhauled gesture navigation system, and while Launcher hasn't completely solved those issues, their iteration works pretty seamlessly. Launcher 14 supports two kinds of animations for the Recents menu, one being quick switch integration for Android 10 through 14 that does require you to be rooted but apparently works identical to the stock Pixel launcher. I personally haven't rooted my device yet to test it out because I find the non-rooted animations work great 99% of the time. Don't get me wrong, they can be ever so slightly slower than stock Pixels, occasionally there's a slight stutter or delay, and sometimes the animation isn't consistent with the rest of the UI, but to me it's definitely worth the trade-off. We also got a bit of information regarding upcoming features we can expect in future betas, like support for multiple icon packs, a no app drawer mode, more custom colors for Material U, drawer tabs, and much more. Ever since I started using Pixel devices full-time, the biggest problem for me is how bare-bones the stock Pixel UI is. If you've been watching this channel for a long time now, there's no doubt you've heard me rant about it at some point, and I love Lawn Chair because it resolves a lot of those restrictions all while keeping the signature Pixel look and feel. Even before this major update, Lawn Chair was perfect for using third-party icon packs, it supported notification badges, gave us the ability to hide the status bar, change the icon shape, 
size and gave plenty of options for grid sizes. There's also gesture support, the ability to customize what specific gestures do, and probably the best, most requested feature of them all, the ability to remove the at-a-glance widget for times when you just want to shake things up a bit. Basically, all the features that hardcore Android customization users would want to tinker with are here without breaking the beautiful pixel aesthetic. To me, this is very telling on what the possibilities are when you have a dedicated team of passionate developers, and I wish Google would either steal these features, purchase Launch Hair as a whole, or even start a side project like Samsung does with Goodlock, that way Pixel fans can have the best of both worlds. Now, before we get out of here, there are some last minute items I wanted to touch on, but just didn't get a chance to mention yet. To install Launch Air 14, the process is actually pretty straightforward. You just have to visit the official website, download the Lawn Feed add-on for the Google search feed, and then the Lawn Chair APK. Once downloaded, open the Lawn Chair app, set it as your default launcher, then allow restricted settings if you feel comfortable to enable notification badges. The Smart Space add-on is pretty similar. Install the app from their website, allow all permissions as required. Requested, and within a few minutes, you should be able to easily install and edit plugins for the at glance widget. I've installed this on several of my devices now, including my Pixel Fold and Z Fold 5, since I mainly use foldables these days. To be clear, my expectations were pretty low, considering most launchers don't support foldable devices, and the Launcher team has said they don't have a foldable to test this on, but I was surprised to see the results. For the Z Fold 5, I'd say it isn't worth your time, mainly because there's no consideration for the super narrow cover screen and since you can't make a separate layout for the inner screen versus the outer screen, it's nearly impossible to build an interface that works well for both. The Pixel Fold, however, is a completely different story. The scaling for the cover screen seems great during my week of usage, but even better, the inner display seems to work almost perfectly. Probably the only issue here is with the layout, since it's one-to-one -to, -one to the cover screen, which basically means the inner screen just blows up one home screen page, but to me, it's a small price to pay for the customization I'm looking for, especially especially for the Pixel Fold. As a whole, I am thoroughly impressed with Launch Air 14. I love the idea of a highly customizable Pixel UI, and even better, I love how simple their implementation is. Something that turns a lot of people away from deep Android customization is the difficulty to get everything set up correctly, and what's refreshing about Launch Air is it's so straightforward to the point where I actually want to tweak. There's no rooting required, no hooking up a computer, and does not conflict with the normal smartphone use cases, so to me, I'm going to keep using it as my main launcher for the time being. Keep in mind, this is still in beta and more features are coming down the road, so there is a chance we may be able to revisit this in the future. Either way, let me know what you think of the new Launch Air 14 update. Is this something you want to try out on your own device? And even more importantly, do you think Google will ever implement some of these features on the stock Pixel experience? Leave a comment and let me know your thoughts. I'm sure myself and the rest of the Android community would love to know what you're thinking. In the meantime, guys, I'm getting out of here. This has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.